Do we remember uh, talking about synesthesia? Oh, yeah. yes, I do. Yeah, back in episode 67, mm-hmm. around about. Could you tell me, could you remind everyone what synesthesia is? Could, could I? Could you describe it? I think Luke could. So it's like uh, this um, experience <coughs> that some people have whereby um, senses sort of cross over. So like you have like a, a color of a sound or a, a color for a person or a color for a concept. Mm. It's not always color, but like basically the crossing over of senses that are normally separate. Well, uh, the vast majority of the time it is actually associated with color. However... For the first time in recorded history, synesthesia has been found in a blind person. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, this is a first in recorded history. Wow. So yeah, synesthesia is quite heavily associated with, you know, seeing colours, associating colours, visual things with concepts like names or dates or numbers or letters or whatever. Yeah. Probably because sight for most people is like their primary sense. Mm-hmm. So therefore it's probably like the one to be activated if you experience synesthesia. Um, but that doesn't mean that you need sight. So, how do you think non-visual synesthesia might manifest in a blind person specifically? Is it like taste for certain sounds? It could be, but Ooh. what are you thinking? What senses do we have? Oh, textures. Textures, because mm. that's how they read in stuff, right? Yes. 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 <gasps> so, <gasps> right. Just like, yeah. yeah. Because you, when you're blind, you use your fingers a lot for like, not just braille, but like feeling the shapes of things. I wonder if that means that uh, when you read Braille, it's getting mapped to the visual cortex, even if you don't have sight. I don't think the visual maybe. cortex probably more... Maybe. I mean, that part of the brain has got to be used for something, right? Sure. But, hmm. But, you know, yeah. we'll look into it. We'll, yeah. look, we'll have a look yeah. into it. No, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. So, this 40-year-old blind man took part in a case study with the journal, I'm going to butcher this, Neuropsychologia. Neuropsycho... Neuropsychologia. Wow, that's a long name. Neuropsychological. Neuropsychological. Neuro, neuro, like neuropsychological. Like neuropsychological. What a waste <laughs> of ink. <laughs> <laughs> Once is enough, I think. <laughs> uh, and he has essentially proven that he does, in fact, experience synesthesia. So for him, it presents in his index fingers mm. uh, as precise tactile textures associated with numbers and letters and all the typical things that you might wow. associate with colour. So with, he's sort you know, of hallucinating normal. textures. Yeah. That's super um, interesting. Yeah. Or in the flip sense, he could feel textures and associate textures with certain ideas. Like, yeah. Yeah. So okay. It could, it could go both ways. Yeah. 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 That's incredibly interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So for this man, uh, he describes the number three as feeling like velvet. Mm. So that's interesting. And he also describes the month of April as feeling like plastic, which kind of makes sense to me. I don't know mm. why. <laughs> no. no. That doesn't, that, I don't, I disagree. April feels like a fake month. He's wrong. Uh, I'm sorry. It's April now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. That's what I was born. I know it's your birthday. I'm so yeah, sorry. I don't know, man. Rude. I agree. April does seem like it's not real. It like, feels like uh, Luke Cutforth was born oh in gosh. April. April. Spiral. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the year. <laughs> the Luca year. So, the Luca. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so the test they did, uh, they basically took a board covered with 40 squares of textured materials and arranged them in a random pattern. The man and also 10 other blindfolded, non-synesthesia people uh, were also included on the test. Um, And they were given three three minutes each to kind of feel around the textures, get familiar with them, start thinking about what they were like, what the textures remind them of or like what they might associate with. And then they were asked to make associations between the textures they felt and what they felt, you know, that texture kind of represented in their mind. Right. And so in the way synesthesia works, it's kind of like trying to prod at that. Like if yeah. you have synesthesia, you'd be able to like quite, quite effortlessly come up. A lot yes, of, of course. Like, and then they jumbled them up a month later. <gasps> okay. So like, right. like, yes, because that's one of the things about synesthesia is it's not just an association. It's an association that's stable over time. It's consistent. Time. Yeah. yeah, it's consistent. So they left it a month. They jumbled up all the materials on the board and then they brought everyone back and did the whole thing again. You know, gave them some time to like feel the textures, and then they asked them, "What do they, what do you associate with these textures?" And they recorded their answers and they compared. Now, how accurate do you think the non synesthesia people were <clears throat> at re guessing the same or like reassociating the same things with the same textures? Thirty percent, ten percent. 
Ooh, both of you are wrong. It's lower than 10%. Right. Whoa. It's 7%, actually. Wow. You kidding me? 7%, yeah. I feel like not I could remember accurate. something over a month. If we're not meant to be mm. trying to remember it. I would, though. Mm. Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> no, I, no, you're no, very no, helpful no. to this study, Corin. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they don't let me do studies anymore. I just keep on trying to mess them up. <laughs> <laughs> and what about our dear friend, this blind man? He's anonymous, by the way. He's not called blind man. What, it, what about the blind guy? How do you think? That'd be a wild case 95? of nominative yeah, determinism. 95. Uh, 98. It's not, like, it's not quite that high. It's 75%. Oh. But it's still over 10 times higher. Yes. Than, uh, I think that's pretty conclusive. That's pretty conclusive. Yeah. 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 Although there care. are no... Well, interestingly, there's no control of people who are actually blind. Yeah, that's a bunch the thing. of people who are not blind that, pretending to be blind. That's the thing I wanted to bring up at the end of this, was that <laughs> it is only one blind guy with synesthesia yeah. and ten people who aren't, you know, aren't blind and don't have synesthesia. Because you'd expect so it's two that maybe blind people might have, like, they, or could have, a higher definition sense of touch. Yeah. I would say they probably have better recall of, uh, recall of that, do you know what I mean? Yeah, in that, that, yeah. In that... Um, I would, I could like remember how something looks, but if your primary yeah. source of interacting with the world is listening and feeling, mm. you're probably going to be remember how something feels more because the texture of something is irre- like I don't, I only remember the texture of something generally in combination with something else, or if it's like a core childhood yeah. memory. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, I just, I just think that's whoever did this study, maybe they didn't have access to like they didn't know anyone blind and they didn't have like a bunch of funding to be yeah. able to find blind people. So they just used whoever they had lying around. Um, none of whom were blind, but <laughs> it does seem like you're, if your control yeah. in, in su- is, it, are, there's two changes, two variables. Number one, they don't have synesthesia. Yeah. Number two, they're not blind. They're not blind. Mm-hmm. So you haven't necessarily discovered anything. You, could, <laughs> you might have you done. Might have discovered that blind people are quite good at recalling textures. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, yeah, that, yeah. 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 <laughs> I would imagine that blind people are quite good at recalling yeah. textures. Although, maybe, you know, it might, this might be, because I've not read the actual paper itself. It could be perhaps that in the literature, there is already some precedent for blind people's recall of textures being somewhat on par with, um, with okay. seeing people. but Or at least not set ten times better. Yeah. You know? Out of interest, do you have any... So, for example, I was thinking about if I was part of the study and I was asked to feel a bunch of textures, there'd be some textures I definitely don't have an association with, but the one that sprung to mind was, like, if I felt sandpaper, I would definitely feel that associated with my dad because I did a lot of, like, DIY oh, really? and stuff mm. with my dad. And I wonder if there's anything... Do you have any association with sandpaper or with any other specific textures? Yeah, sand? your dad too, actually. Weirdly dad- enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your dad doing with... Just my- reminds me of your dad. Oh, okay. Yeah. You think you he's know? an abrasive person? He seems no, like a he's a lovely person. Yeah. So yeah. why sandpaper? Well, when you feel... <laughs> <laughs> when you caress his face. When you caress his cheek. <laughs> but yeah, are there, any, are there any textures that you can recall? Sandpaper specifically for me reminds me of being in woodwork in school. In right. Oh, wow. And that might probably be quite stable if you felt sandpaper over... Yeah, over a few probably, months. Yeah. I guess sandpaper actually made me think kind of of my granddad because I would do sort of woodworking and all that sort of stuff yeah. with him as well. Mm-hmm. But gosh, other textures. What sort of other textures are there? I mean, there's food textures, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. um, like there. But then that also is combined with sort of taste and smell. Mm. Um, hmm. I can't oh, think of any not textures too... off the top of my head. Yeah, because we probably our brains, because we're so sight dominant, yeah. don't yeah. have an awful lot. A focus on texture. Yeah. Oh no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's a Go texture on. I can recall. Like, and th- this. What's weird is that when I recall this texture, I'm not recalling like, oh, this specific memory. It's just I remember the times that I've used this thing. Do you know the? Do you know the texture of? Do you know those like pins that are in sort of boards and that you can put your hand in them and it, and it keeps. Them oh in. yeah. What like those sort of things? That's my friend Daniel's house. Yeah, that reminds me of like oh, God. <laughs> that reminds me of my mum's uh, cousin's house. My mum, my, my family's very big. And my mum's cousin's um, house. You know, they had one of those there, and I yeah. just distinctly remember being there mm. and using that, feeling it on your face. You know, yeah, yeah. On your hand. Oh, it's yeah. great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was good. Some good textures yeah. out there, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. Some awful ones as well. Oh, don't even get me like the that. like the the food at the bottom of the sink. Ugh. Or stepping on a slug. Yeah. Oh my god, that oh. always makes me feel so bad. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh. Why don't we talk about something more pleasant now, though? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that your whole story? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've got a, I've got a quote from uh, Claire Press, who is a neuroscientist. Uh, These interesting findings make it unlikely to vision. Uh, uh, sorry, make it unlikely that vision is necessary for developing synesthesia, at odds with some previous claims. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Because. 
uh, why would it be that only vision crosses over with other senses? I will admit that I, at one point in time, thought it was exclusively visual in that it was like colors and patterns. But when you think about it, it makes sense that it could be literally like any sensory experience. I've seen people talk about um, words and taste, although I guess words can be visual as well, but then you don't need to read a word. It, that's that's what's difficult because we are, as Luke says, so sight dominant, mm. um, purely because sight is just such an oppressive um, uh, an oppressive sense that we have. Yeah. It, it, it dominates our entire lives. Um, it, it, it's almost hard to extricate things from sight yeah like there there's music obviously and that is just pure sound without any um without without any vision but then we also we're we also sort of like use language in a very sight-based way I and mean, if you look at the stroop effect so have you heard of the stroop effect before i don't know if i'm familiar so this is uh, what you notice when you show people. You, you've definitely uh, sort of experienced probably, it before, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. When you show someone um, a color word like red uh, uh, yeah. in a different written in a different oh, color, so yeah. red written in green ink, mm -hmm. and you ask the person to say what color the word is written in, you'll notice this sort of um, I guess hesitation to an extent. Yeah. Um, like this, there's this lag because your brain automatically reads. It reads automatically, yeah. and it takes a second for you to switch and look and visually see the color. So when we even talk about language, even that is almost innately tied to vision just yeah. because of reading, you yeah. know? So it's really difficult to extricate um, v sight from anything. So even we're talking about music, unless it's music without words, then you're probably thinking visually in some sense, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank I you wish for sharing I had it with synesthesia. us. Really, do you? Yeah, especially visual. I have aphantasia. We all have aphantasia. Yeah. yeah. It's quite the opposite. It's boring. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's useful. Sometimes? No. In no, no it's actually no, no, it's yeah, never I useful. Say. I suppose I can't picture something that's scary. Well, yeah, that's the, mm, the only time okay. it's useful is for things like, like I said in the past, about like getting over loved ones quicker because you're not <laughs> constantly visited by their image. Mm -hmm. um, which is, oh, sorry, getting over loved ones dying. Yeah. Not just getting over loved ones. Uh, oh, like, God, oh, I'm God, so sick of my wife. Oh, goodness, I can't picture <laughs> 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 I'm over it now. <laughs> Who was I even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> she goes away on holiday for two weeks. She comes back. Who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> I don't love you anymore. <laughs> no, but I do actually sometimes get. Uh, this is going to sound really bad, but I do sometimes like, like forget people exist quite quickly. I think that's an ADHD thing. Oh, really? Um, I don't know. I mean, I actually also have. I also get that. That's, that's not to say that I have ADHD, but. Um, uh, to be transparent, I'm in the process of diagnosis. Yeah, me too. But I also have a, a just a wall, you both know this, a wall of photographs of my friends that have visited my house. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a bunch of Polaroids on my wall. And it's very useful for when I need to have a party or um, <laughs> feel lonely and yeah. want to message a friend or want to hang out and do something fun. Because... Every time up until I had it's that like a wall, menu. that was going to say it's like a menu. With it is. Friends. It's honestly fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Because every time up until then, I would just be sitting in my room alone, being like, "Oh, I guess I have zero friends because yeah. I could not recall a single one." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I just couldn't. Yeah. And then someone would say one, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, that friend oh, I've yeah, known for that. ten years." Yeah. 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 Like it, it, they just don't come to you. You know, it's yeah. very strange. Yeah. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreoncom forward slash guys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on old Sci Guys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sci Guys Pod to find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>